Hi, Mark Rinda at Applied Design Intelligence here. Today's video we're going to go through this base cabinet configurator. I'm going to run it through the paces, but first I'm going to go over all the options on this form. Um, what is there? There's five tabs here, and on this main tab there is eight major configurations and then a ton of fine-tuning type configuration. We have the cabinet sized, finished both left, right, and unfinished. That refers to this is a unfinished. You got the notch here and a notch at the bottom so the cabinet sits level. Uh, you have your connectors and and whatnot. This is a finished and without all that stuff. Okay, door swing. This is a full cabinet open configuration, so obviously there is no door swing and there is no holes for door hardware or any of that at this configuration, but it's left and right. That's it. You have a door lock, a drawer lock, a fillet, which is a fillet around well, it's a quarter round for you cabinet makers. A quarter round that goes on um, all the edges on doors and drawers. A little eighth inch quarter round. I'll show that to you later. Uh, the drawer front height, there is only drawers at the top on these base cabinets. And that's what that height refers to. And there's toe kick height, toe kick depth, and whether there's a toe kick or not. This toe kick can go away and the cabinets sit on a, a ladder type structure and sometimes they're uh, fixed to the wall. Okay, we have fixed shelf, true or false, adjustable shelf count, one or two, top gap, which is between the top of the cabinet to the top of the drawer front. Um, that needs to be adjustable for the for the drop on the uh, cabinet top. Um, American Woodworking Institute cabinet, true or false, um, that dictates how many dowel holes for the most part are in the cabinet and the thickness of the shelves at 36 inches and over I believe. Okay, drawer slide length, that's adjustable. Um, drawer slide selection, automatic or manual, that's for overriding the material schedule, which is, let me see, it's right here. There's material schedules. Um, this is designed to have as many as you want, but um, it was decided that this is more than enough. Each one of these material schedules has a set of hardware and the type of uh, materials that are in every piece in the cabinet is decided in the material schedule. So any cabinets that are, oh, I'm supposed to save, any cabinets that are made with the same material schedule are going to have all of the same um, materials and hardware in it. So go back to that. I think we're done with this. These are read-only. Um, these are decided by the material schedule unless it's overridden. And you can see on here the type of uh, hardware that's going in here. Uh, dimensions, overall width, overall height, uh, case depth, and overall depth. Overall depth is decided by the case depth, and this is read-only. Okay, and here again, this is the local roll override. If I choose true, then I can override um, the material schedule. Uh, separate members for the, the face group. Um, that's a little complicated. I'll, I'll go into that a little more when I have a face group showing here. Uh, same with this model version shop or completed version. Machine parts only will give me, it'll get rid of all the hardware and bring it down and other things and it'll bring it down to just the machined uh, sheet goods so it can be sent to um, router sim we got fine-tuning. 
And these are a few hole sizes that sometimes need fine tuning and the drawer top gap, shelf clearance, etc. This is pretty interesting. This is every possible part of the cabinet and I can change the grain direction right from here. Um, I can change it on a single part and then once this is sent to router sim it'll automatically get the grain direction or set the grain direction for all of the parts except that one part and that one part it'll use whatever I tell it to. So let's run this through its paces. We got the full cab open showing now so I'll go to the second one which is full cab pair of doors. Uh, I have this uh, finished right end. I'll have it unfinished on both. Door swing. I got a pair of doors so that that's not gonna come into play. And I think I'll just run it here. And that's it. A full cabinet pair of doors. Okay, let's just go to... oh, and this side is now unfinished. Or they both are. Unfinished does both of them. Okay, and there's no door lock. The next configuration is full cabinet single door, so I might as well put a door lock on there. And Okay, what should I do? Let's, well, I guess that's good enough. All right, and there it is. Single door with a lock. Okay, let me get rid of the lock and full cab pair of doors, full cab single door pair of doors, pair of drawers, and let's change this to the AWI cabinet, and let's see, we'll change this to wireframe. You can see the dowel pattern, there's some skipped dowels in here. Um, when it's set to the AWI pattern, it has to have a full set of dowels here. Well, let's change, let's put a fixed shelf in there. You'll see the dowels in the fixed shelf as well. Okay, here we go. And there you have it. Starts to get a little busy in wireframe here, but you can see that it's a full set of dowels now. And there's a fixed shelf, of course. Um, two drawers. There is a partition floating in here. Um, and you can see the fillets on here, the quarter rounds. And let's get this out of wireframe. It's a little hard to see right there. Okay. And now we have pair of doors, single drawer, which you know, doesn't change at all that much, but here we go. And there you go. Not a huge difference, but when you add up all of the, the various changes that can go on, there's probably a, a couple million different configurations here. Let's set the height to 18 before we go on to the next. Oops, that's the width. Uh, 26 for the width and change the height to uh, let's say 24. Let's see what we get here on the next configuration. We have a pair of drawers with the open lower. Let's see what that looks like. And there you have a squat little cabinet with uh, two fairly narrow drawers. You can configure this any way you want. 
single drawer or single door and drawer and let's get rid of the toe kick on this one and of course I could change all the dimensions and it, it won't do anything if I change let me see change the overall width to 100 inches let's see what she does and that's it the cabinet automatically switched to 36 inches instead of a 100 inches because 36 inches is the maximum width. This particular client doesn't want warnings popping up that you have to OK. They wanted it just to resize. But there is no kick, as you can see. Uh, there was one more thing I wanted to show. Oh, the uh, configuration. When you have separate members just means that this um, door and this drawer front are separate members. They can be, when it goes to router sim, router sim can get this part from one sheet and this part from another sheet. It doesn't really matter. If you have um, grouped members, that will force this part and this part to be connected in the center here and it'll put a score mark there. That way you'll have a perfect grain match. You use the score mark to uh, split all the parts apart later. And I can use the grain direction override on that to get the grain direction the way I want if I need to. Okay, that's about it for this demonstration of a base cabinet configurator. I'm Mark Randa at Applied Design Intelligence. Stop by and check out the other stuff there. Thanks.